Hello students, welcome to today's daily news analysis. As always, we are referring to the Hindu newspapers, Delhi edition. So on the front page, you can see this is the news that we are covering. And we know that the Bangladesh Prime Minister, coming to this news, that Bangladesh Prime Minister was to come to India. And naturally, the Prime Minister is coming to India. Both countries are going to deliberate and negotiate on certain things. Now we are, we can see from the heading itself that they are going to, she is going to come and the priority is to resolve the Tista river water, you know, sharing of the water from the Tista river. So she is going to talk about this and they are also going to talk about the Kushiara water treaty. So naturally these topics are important. First of all, they are there in the context of international relations, India-Bangladesh relations. It is there in the news. And if you look at the pre-based questions, right? So such topics can be asked like state and river, or uh, it can ask us about uh, the river and associated distributary or tributary. So such questions can be taken up by UPSC, which they do it. Okay, so we should know about the Tista and the Kushiara River. So we'll see this in some time. Besides, uh, besides, they are also talking about that Indian side will help Bangladesh deal with energy crisis. So we understand that Bangladesh is having an energy crisis, and India can facilitate in creation of. Power, by creation of power plant so india can do that india has the specialization in that and particularly the maitri power plant which is a coal fired thermal power plant uh, based on the super critical technology so super critical coal fired power plant so it's basically a power plant based on more advanced technology which is more efficient super critical power plant okay uh, we will read more in the international section where uh, India and Bangladesh, so basically ba Bangladesh wanting defense equipments uh, from us, primarily uh, dealing with the Navy. So they're going to talk about this also. So this is covered in the later part that is the international page. Okay, now coming to the Tista River, we should know about it. So you can see in the map also over here, so this is a bit small. Okay, so is it, it is originating somewhere in Sikkim. Uh, it's actually in Himalayas, Eastern Himalayas, which is at the border of uh, India, India and Tibet, right? So it's uh, starting over here. The long river arises in Ponhuri mountain of Eastern Himalayas and flows through the Indian states of Sikkim, West Bengal, and then finally Bangladesh and from Bangladesh, Bay of Bengal. So it's passing through this hilly areas of West Bengal, so it passes through and then it goes. Right, Tista river, it is flowing like this. So you see it is not concerned with Brahmaputra, which is coming from the east. Typically, you know, you will feel that Brahmaputra, so uh, nearby region, it should come from there. No, so you should be careful with this. So you see this light blue color thing over here, light blue. This is the Brahmaputra river, Meghna river actually. Okay, so this is it. And uh, the West Bengal doesn't want to give water from the Tista River. It wants to reserve for itself and then the water flows. So in the summer months particularly, uh, Bangladesh is more sensitive to this issue. It's uh, during the summer months when the problem arises. Okay, next is Kushiara River, which is a distributary river in Bangladesh and Assam. And it is, it forms on the India-Bangladesh border as a branch of the Barak River. Right, so we should know about this. In fact, why don't you check on the internet and read more about the Barak River and the associated states. Okay, so we are done with this thing. Now let's move forward. Supreme Court, mm, Supreme Court asks center states to allay EWS quota concerns. So there is this article, and uh, this it part it asks the parties to crystallize the thoughts by tomorrow. So tomorrow again, this thing will be there, and we'll have more definitive information. Anyways, uh, today what we have is we have a basic idea about this EWS issue. So some concerns have been expressed, and concerns are discussed in the GS2 mains paper.
right so i've shared the screenshot i want you to focus on this page this area so this basically concerns the 103rd amendment constitution amendment what does it do it removes the basis of the indra sani judgment that indra uh, that quota cannot be given on a purely economic basis so whenever you hear about reservation reservation has to be based on social it's based on social considerations like if a person is from the scheduled caste obc etc so obc is again caste as well as economic status if a person is belonging to a family whose household income is more then they don't get reservation so it's social consideration is very important it can be social and economic socio economic consideration but so, so social part is very important now the reservation is being provided on the grounds of somebody being economically weaker section a person could be from a higher caste so socially better off but income wise they are poor so providing reservation to them so this there was a limitation that was set by the indra sani judgment and it also said indra sani judgment that the reservation cannot exceed 50% limit so that can also not take place now what is happening is that it allows for additional 10% reservation to the ews community so it is breaching the limit that is set by the indra sani judgment okay so this is one thing now we are only focus if you look at ews we are only focusing on the economic criteria so social criteria is ignored in a way now is this a violation of the basic structure of the constitution so this is important right so these are some contentions contentious issues which are going to be deliberated and we are going to have more and more points on this i am doing this since whenever you know i started dna with an institute from that time i am doing this so the last year september october okay whether it breaches the equality code and the constitutional scheme by giving sanctity to the existing reservation which is only created temporarily yeah whether the imposition of ews quota on private unaided institution violates the basic structure right so uh, private unaided institutions they are also under the ambit of reservation so does this violate the basic structure or not so fine so these issues are going to come up so i want you to have this keep this as as your note somewhere right it will help you with your answer writing India gets its first nasal COVID nasal COVID vaccine, so something that is inhaled, right? So nasal COVID vaccine. Actually, we have injectable COVID vaccine now. Nasal COVID vaccine. Who has developed this? Bharat Biotech, the ones who made the co vaccine, right? So that same company. And the approval has been given by the Central Drugs Standards Control Organization, so CDSO. Is the regulatory body associated with this? So this is the CD, um, body, and what all things do they do? We have, we can see it over here. So it is based on the Drugs and Cosmetics Act. So this regulates obviously the drugs. Um, on this basis, we have the organization known as Central Drugs. So what is it Central Drugs Standard Control Organization? Fine, we have this over here what is it doing it is obviously it is saying approval should be given or not it is looking into safety data efficacy quality of the medical product etc so it's about drugs many creams etc that you use and even this medical devices like nebulizer anything anything to do with the medical devices so they are also under their concern and this is under the ministry of health Women set a fire over dowry, right? Husband in laws on the run. We are not interested in the case. What we are concerned with is GS1. You can see the issue of dowry that still prevails, right? Now, this can be taken up in the GS1. It's a social issue. The victim suffers 40% burns. So, dowry associated violence. But don't we get the issue of domestic violence? We can do it in relation to dowry or without relation to dowry. So issue of domestic violence. 
And again, here we can also look at it from the point of view of JS2 as to what is the government doing to deal going doing to deal with the issue of domestic violence, etc. And also the dowry issue. So that comes under JS2, that is social justice. You know, I don't really like to go deeper into the syllabus. I just like to keep it simple. Okay, so social justice component. So this we have. Okay. We can also look at it from the point of view of case study, ethics case study. In your neighborhood, this is happening. You hear screeching and loud noises, screaming. You know something is amiss. There is a problem. Right? Uh, you are a person, you hear it in the neighborhood. You are aspiring for civil services. That's a story. What do, would you do in that regard? How would you deal with the situation? Do you complain? Do you go to their house and intervene, fight? Do you complain? Uh, complain to the police do you go to the police if you go to the police their family will be broken so what is this and how can you be sure that actually dowry is taking place so this is an ethical dilemma right so how to deal with the situation this is your ethics part okay and again uh daily commission for women has been mentioned so chief demands quick action so what is this national commission for women the state commission for women doing so delhi commission for women is obviously state commission for women is it a statutory body or not should it be a statutory body national commission for women is okay so you read your polity book for this okay revise this thing okay. what are tasks they are doing are they doing good work or not in fact a question has already been asked in the mains paper okay mm -hmm. will decongest delhi roads in phases how and why can't we talk it this way urban congestion urban issues urban challenges let's talk just about urban congestion traffic that is a theme right so we can look at it for, uh, this way gs3 we can look at it this way and what needs to be done what steps can be taken or what, what do you think should be done right so well let's take this as an exercise you can share this in the comment section you know you have to be like think of yourself as a civil servant you are having this problem how will you deal with this and you when you write it write it in a way that you are giving recommendations to somebody that will be your approach for your gs writing you'll do well many people marooned in rain hit bangalore so what does this marooned means marooned means people are stuck they are isolated Yeah, 12 fishermen arrested by Sri Lankan Navy. Which fishermen are we talking about? Indian fishermen. So, Indian fishermen issue. Again, GS2. International relations, fishermen issue or India-Sri Lanka challenges in their bilateral relations. Either way, it can be taken up. I feel a full-fledged question with reference to fishermen can be asked. Okay. Air safety is paramount and politicians should not be allowed to pressure ATC officials. Right, so this controversy had taken place. I happened to watch this NDTV, right? So Ravish, Ravish Kumar show. So the entire thing was covered. Okay, I'm not interested, not part of the syllabus also. India, 7% plus annual growth and the realities. Not interested, not interested, you're not reading this. You don't have to read this also. And the article may be good, but yes. What we are interested in is, what we are interested in is, Ours is a middle income economy, middle income economy and we have this evidence, you know, we expect that the India is a growing economy and we want India to become a super, look at it this way, we want India to be the next United States or comparable country, we want to be having the right place in the global order, but for that we have to be economically prosperous. What we have seen is that these middle income countries, there have been many before us who have gone through this road trajectory, they are still stuck in something known as middle income trap. They have somehow not been able to be classified as a high income, you know, they are not having this high GDP or high per capita income, they are still middle income countries. And there is a fear amongst the policy makers that we are going to be a, we are going to be in the middle income. And we were expecting, we were hoping that with the demographic dividend, sorry, I'm going beyond the article. I have not even read this actually. 
okay so with the demographic dividend with the youth more youthful population will be able to go outside of this but you see what is happening right in fact this population is going to age and we are going to have the demographic burden okay and useful population not being getting jobs not having a so livelihood issues that create social evils social unrest so there is the problem over here now we should read more about the middle income trap so you can check out the wikipedia page is pretty good pretty awesome and this bank is actually very good right so you get all these things over here so middle income trap is an economic development situation in which a country that attains a certain uh, income due to given advantages get struck at that level what advantages their currency is less like dollar currency is much more indian currency is much lesser so we have an export benefit export advantage we have a huge population so huge labor force cheap labor in the country we have natural resources in our country so we have some advantages but then we are stuck and there are many countries that are stuck okay as a policy maker right please read this wikipedia page eventually please read this give more ideas actually uh, as a policy maker what steps must be taken what are the what is a middle income trap first of all define this and then what steps need to be taken to come out of this trap of middle and why not also say that why there is a fear of india being in the middle income trap these are things that you should focus for vizinum vizinjum business as usual is not an option fine 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 we are not concerned about vizinjum yes we can talk about where is it located from prelims perspective basic idea should be there but this is talking about a port in kerala and when port constructions are being done there is always a concern about coastal ecology it's a coastal ecology going bad construction work biodiversity will get affected the people will get displaced so yeah so that, that aspect has to be focused over here so here we get some points right so yeah so let's see this so a 2017 bond of the fallout for the shoreline and marine ecosystem from construction of breakwater and dredging right so that will take place that is the problem then there is a concern about coastal erosion by the way coastal erosion or beach erosion was asked in the mains paper i remember it categorically because i prepared this analysis for the environment part at the academy so mains 2019 okay so you you are getting the points right dredging is taking place you remove the water you construct the port over there that's how it will be done then you have to keep removing the soil so that is dredging okay so coastal erosion then it will lead to displacement of people there were there must be people who are already living there who are engaged in fishing activities so they are affected so what about their rights then bi marine biodiversity how can that be dealt with now that can be dealt with something known as having exercise of environment impact assessment i think this name is sufficient right and we also have in fact if you are writing this mains 2022 you should prepare the eia thing so eia rules were amended and eia is mandatory under the environment protection act right? so this is very very important the critical these this critical views are not are being asked right this word critical only is very there okay but yes eia rules this should you should prepare and when we talk about environment impact assessment of a project naturally it has a social impact also so why not talk about this also okay so this is there uh, what listros tells us about pretend today mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right not interested the burden that women bear we are interested right so what burden does a woman bear so we'll do this this is important for your gs1 So this article provides us some insights by referring to the story of a woman named Malti. We'll not go into the story, but basic things it talks about is one is access to water. So women have to fetch water. Sometimes they have to walk long distances because the nearby well is controlled by somebody from a higher caste or a community. That is also a problem. So they have they may have to walk 2.5 kilometers. They have to walk long distances. Okay, so that is a problem. And by the way, this how how is the government dealing with this? Neil Kranti, 
जल जीवन मिशन राइट सो जल जीवन मिशन पाइप वाटर कनेक्शन टू ईच हाउस होल्ड इन रूरल इंडिया एक्सेस टू वाटर इज अ प्रॉब्लम देन जेंडर्ड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज वॉट आर दीज जेंडर्ड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज दिस जेंडर नॉर्म्स एट वोमेन हैव टू टेक केयर ऑफ द फैमिली दे हैव टू बे विद इन द होम दे हैव टू कुक फॉर द फूड राइट सो दैट हैज टू बी डन सो जेंडर्ड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज and many of this task is repetitive they have to do this hard and menial task also at times so this has been referred to as drudgery drudgery right so this is taking place so this hard and menial work this is also hard and menial work access to water so this is a problem this also what are the consequences of it yeah uh, yeah this is there what are the consequences of this drop out in the education also right drop out in the from the workforce also so these are certain problems here some points have been mentioned it may lead to exhaustion musculoskeletal disorders lower immunity higher mental stress so these are some concerns it threatens women's physical safety in fact we can also talk about the issue of double burden of a woman what is a double burden means double burden of a middle class working woman so she has to work also and she has to do this task also this was asked in the mains paper okay now i said about the dropout so here we have the dropout uh, fact over here so median years of school girl for school schooling for girls is still 4.9 compared to 7.3 for boys why women more likely to drop out then we have a fact on labor force participation female labor force participation so which was 35% in mid 2000s and now it is 17% almost half of that why this why is very very important and this why is basically gs1 what needs to be done is gs2 what government is doing about it gs2 can be gs3 also economy so yeah okay so what can be done some points have been given like restructuring household rules household rule responsibilities the burden should be shared and how can that be by means of persuasion by means of awareness right so changing the mindset so that can be done more systematic investment driven by sustained economic growth and better state capacity in delivery of quasi public goods you know this was a basic reason why i read what is this quasi public goods i wanted to know about it and this comes as the last point and the answer ends over here because you expected since it is there in the heading but i can understand that public goods are basically parks etc so goods that are accessible to all so what should be quasi public goods maybe the goods that are accessible to all but basically women for example crèche right so crèche or some healthcare need specific to the exclusive for the women so quasi public goods in fact access to wifi is also known as a quasi public good okay from here on we take less time okay so text and context i like this part this uh, the facts we get over here so revenue deficit grant what is this revenue deficit grant okay so this uh, this is 7183 crores have been given as a revenue deficit grant to the states by the center by the union why this has been given because the 15th finance commission had recommended a scheme known as post devolution revenue deficit right so post devolution revenue deficit what i understand is more you know uh, devolution means uh, oh in this context it means that the union giving more revenue to the state so 14th finance commission had recommended this that earlier it was 30% it should be increased to 40% so post devolution revenue deficit now this thing was to be done but at the same time it said that special category states the states that were getting certain ex, you know special considerations in giving this money for to the states so that will be reduced so that that would result in revenue deficit so post devolution revenue deficit grant which coming from the 15th finance commission so is this a statutory grant or a discretionary grant so this has to be a statutory grant because the 15th finance commission 
Finance Commission has recommended it. So this is a norm. This has to be done. There is another way by which the states can give money to the center. The center can give money to the states, union can give, and that is known as discretionary. Right? So this is statutory. Coal production seems to be up. Sorry, it seems to be low, missing its target, and coal production, that fact becomes important. I think everybody should be concerned about is that uh, power is coming from coal in the country. We have had a coal shortage this particular year, and there were power cuts across the country. So this is a problematic sign. And even the coal imports are going to be difficult with the Ukraine war that is taking place. Right? National, uh, national gas is being stopped. So they want to reduce their reliance on Russia, European countries. So they will look at other avenues of power generation, even if it is polluting. So coal demand is going to increase. So that will push the coal prices. Next, we have the PM Shri scheme. What is this PM Shri scheme? This is Pradhan Mantri schools for rising India. Right. So PM Shri schools, Pradhan Mantri schools for rising India. Okay. So why is S H coming? Fine. Okay. So this is about creation of model schools. I think one good thing Gamadni Party has been able to do is education and model schools, good quality schools. So center is also working on the same approach. So one good example of cooperative federalism. Okay, uh, for ease of business, so 16 states have said that they will align with this portal known as National Single Window Pension, National Single Window Scheme. What is this basically? This is something created by the center, I assume, center, national state. So all this business related, if somebody wants to start their business, so business related things, etc., uh, those regulations etc they want the file work can be done at this portal only they don't have to go from one office to another everything accessible in a single window that is nsws chilean referendum for a new constitution not right so not uh, doing this okay the controversy over kk shalja's nomination for ramson maxi award important very important not her saying no, but what is important is it's important for pre and what is important for pre Ramson Maxe award. So that is one thing. Anyways, let's see why she uh, said no. So reason is uh, KK Shelja, first of all, was nominated for Ramson Maxe award, which is basically a kind of a Nobel Peace, Nobel Prize, but Nobel Prize for Asia. So somebody who has done exceptional work, so she may have done some exceptional work, uh, and for that, to honor that, the Ramson Maxey Award is given. Now, who's Ramsey Maxey? So she, it, he, Ramson Maxey was the seventh president of Philippines. So his, his memory, the Philippine government, is organizes this. Okay. Now, what is the problem? Why should, did she say no? This is an honor that maybe everybody wants it. So reason was that Maxey was anti-communist. Right, he anti-communist during his time. Many communists were killed during his uh, rule. So, and uh, KK Shelja herself is from the Communist Party, so she has refused it. Okay, here we have more information. The Ramson Maxey Award Foundation is gives this, and it is a non-profit organization. Even though it is in memory of their president, but it is a non-profit organization, and it is Asia's version of the Nobel. The benefits of intermittent fasting, anybody interested in this, please by all means. Okay. Uh, yeah, same Bangladesh issue. So Bangladesh shares wish list for defense equipment from India. What all things are there? I think we don't have to read this. We can save our time over here. All we need is floating dock, logistic ship and oil tanker for its Navy among others. What is a floating dock? What is a dock? Dock is a place where the ships come and rest so this is an example i googled indian navy floating dock right so something that can be in the sea whether ships can dock so it will help in the logistics okay logistic ships so for movement of cargo etc so getting a ship from uh, from us we are having this we have been able to become a kind of atman Irbar in navy then oil tanker Fine, so these are the certain things. 
then we have pod discusses china moves covid pod discusses china moves and covid vaccine so who went to the court because in this photo i don't see the prime minister or the external affairs minister so it is basically foreign ministries officials so bureaucrats from the foreign ministries they were there they were basically um, went to the court uh, to deal discuss the progress that was made as part of the commitments that were done by the leaders in the court summit in tokyo so they were to basically to assist the same so you know officers also have to discuss talk so that thing so this is also known as the senior officials meeting called som you don't have to worry about this what all things they were talking about so one is court is always focusing upon the china aspect right so what is china doing the recent times china that that aspect besides there is a problem economic issue with the sri lanka so they are talking they are discussing about the issue of the sri lanka and besides these court this court group had also worked on the court vaccine initiative so with this what are they talking about so one thing is that there there was a vaccine by their us company known as johnson and johnson it we must have used it okay johnson and johnson so their vaccine we are not agreeing to their vaccine because uh, they want something known as indemnity favor if something goes wrong the company will not be responsible so we are also not agreeing to their terms so they want to push india to accept this vaccine besides uh, they they were in the court countries were initially jointly making this vaccines together they want to supply these vaccines they were producing it but because of this covid thing that severity has come down that demand for vaccine has also come down so they want to see how they can deal with this inventory of their vaccines okay so this is it and besides they also talked about the indo pacific economic framework so i think it's a good time to revise what is economic pacific indo pacific economic framework this is nothing much it is not a trade pact please i'm saying this on purpose it's not a trade pact it's basically an economic initiative launched by us president joe biden it is to deal with the issue of supply chain resilience and we stop nothing more we have to do it doesn't say that these country the countries who are part of the indo pacific economic framework they will be able to trade in favorable terms nothing of that sort we don't know only all we know is for it is for supply chain resilience that's all it ends there it and it is not a trade pact and it is targeted against china they don't say it but we know it is china is not a member of this okay constitution bench may hear real shifts in a case i think we should keep an eye on this and by the way this has to be decided primarily by the election com the root job of the election commission of india african cheetahs may arrive on modi's birthday so let's see non local security personnel being enrolled as voters in jnk so this gupkar alliance in with reference to jammu and kashmir political parties non bjp ones so they formed this gupkar alliance which is protesting against the abolition of article 370 so we studied this earlier that uh, they are not in favor of enrollment of non locals and they are not in favor of implementation of representations of people act 1951 which regulates the election process but what uh, but the problem with this is that representation of peoples act 1950 deals with the electoral rolls so they are talking about 51 but 1950 is the one that deals with the electoral rolls okay if you don't understand please google this is supreme court asks punjab haryana cms to meet with uh, to meet on satla jamuna link canal dispute fine fine Okay, Supreme Court bats for disabled IPS candidates. Okay, so basic thing is that saying that why don't we people disabled people in the IPS they can be given they can be staffed in places where they don't have to engage in physical work like cyber crimes etc. or in, in that sort of intelligence related work they can work over there. So why don't we accommodate that? it right. so the ngo let's read this the ngo had challenged last december a, a, a note that disabled 
from you know disabled from excluding the disabled from certain branches of civil services both in combat and administrative capacity we ex ex uh, this is understood that ips has to be physically fit they have to move from one place to another but then there are certain wings in which the um, disabled basically can be uh, accommodated six states to get branches of national center for disease control yeah so what does this national center for disease control do first of all so naturally disease control so it, it looks into the issue of public health infrastructure surveillance detection if the new disease is there or not so that it does and particularly these days the focus is on antimicrobial resistance right so that is the issue okay so this national center for disease control that's naturally it's one agency it needs to have the regional branches so six states that is andhra arunachal kerala maharashtra tripura up they will get their branches and prior to this ncdc has eight branches in different states right so that is also there okay let's move forward uh list rules takes office as britain's pm finally Putin attends military drills with China. India has sent an army contingent. Okay, fine. Where? We have done this earlier. Russia is organizing something known as Vostok Summit. Vostok exercise. Uh, in which countries of the SCO, India, China, Pakistan, so regional, Central Asian countries, etc. They are participating. It, this is taking place at a time when Russia is engaged in a war. Russia is facing sanctions, etc. We are looking at isolating Russia so that we can put pressure on Russia to... Uh, to stop the ukraine war so india sent their army contingent given the good relations at this time so usa was not happy right usa europe etc they are not happy with this japan is also objecting to this no, not specifically to india but basically this exercise going on united nations slams sri lanka's right record what right record you know this uh, and which un so there is some un human rights council uh, they have been hearing this case of Sri Lanka, that is the human rights violations that took place during their civil civil war. Okay, if you want to read, uh, watch this. Um, basically, I made this Tamil issue. So that's same issue actually. So if you want to read this, you can check on our channel also. So I made this in the context of the Family Man serial, Family Man, Manoj Bajpayee thing, and done this. Okay, global challenges, we are on the business section. Global challenges won't end economics. India's recovery, fine, very good. Future oil supplies will mostly come from Gulf. Okay, as if it's now also it is coming from Gulf only. Nomura raises current account deficit estimates. So what is current account deficit? That's basically the difference between export and import. So uh, when import is more, we don't like it. And that is the current account deficit. So what is the current account deficit like? We should have this figure ready with us. So uh, it, it was 1.2% last year. It has ballooned to 3.5%. You, know, you can use these expressions while writing. Okay, so 1.2% to 3.5%. What are the concerns associated for the economy? Right? What are the concerns? What steps should be incorporated to deal with the issue of rising current account deficit? These are main based topics that can be picked up over here. So GS3. Right, right, right. Right, so this basically concludes our daily news analysis. So thank you for streaming to our channel. I use Primus. Bye-bye, all the best.